Hey there, and welcome to another Fluent English Conversation, the podcast where I talk about a different subject every time so that you can learn some new vocabulary, improve your English, and have fun listening to a little bit about British culture and our life here in the UK. As always, I've prepared a transcript for you, which you can download for free if you check the link in the description, and you'll be able to make notes and study along with me while I'm speaking. This morning, I actually went out for breakfast with my wife and my youngest, and I thought it would be really interesting to have a chat about British breakfasts today. I would say that one of the most famous British dishes, apart from maybe fish and chips, is probably the English breakfast. And we have lots of different names for this. We have an English breakfast, a full English breakfast, a fried breakfast, or a fry up, um, which is what I would tend to say also because it's shorter. And a good rule of thumb, actually, when you're thinking of English, is if you can make it shorter, if you can use less words, we tend to do it that way because we're lazy. So in this case, fry up has less syllables, it's shorter and easier to say, so that's the one I would normally choose myself. And starting with this one, I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about all of the different ingredients and things you can have on it, because actually a fry up can consist of loads of different things, and there are some things which are very typical, some things which change depending on where you go. Normally you have sausages, and there are lots of different types of sausages in the UK. Normally they are pork, and you can have some which are a Lincolnshire sausage, or a Cumberland sausage, which originally come from those areas in the UK, but there's just a different spice mix. So I particularly like Cumberland sausages, but it doesn't really matter so much. Another common ingredient on a fry up would be bacon, and the bacon we have in the UK is very, very different to the bacon that I've seen in America. I'll put a picture somewhere so you can see the type of bacon that we have here. So it's normally called back bacon, and we have smoked and unsmoked. I particularly like smoked, but it generally seems to be unsmoked for most fry ups where, especially if you go to a restaurant, because I think that's the more popular version. We also have something we call streaky bacon. So a streak is kind of like a line or a stripe. And so streaky bacon is the one where you have like lines of fat and then meat and fat and meat. And normally it goes much crispier than the other type of bacon that we would normally have. I quite like streaky bacon and often that's what we use. We put it on top of our chicken when we do a roast dinner and that keeps it all moist and succulent inside. But with a fry up, we normally have back bacon, I think is probably the most common. So along with the meat on the fried breakfast, we also have eggs usually. A lot of places will give you the option of how you like your eggs to be cooked. Often they are fried eggs because it's a fried breakfast, but you can have poached eggs where you boil them in water. You can also have scrambled eggs, which is like an omelette, but you really mix it up so it's in small pieces. And then often you have some vegetables. Normally they are mushrooms and tomatoes. Tomatoes tend to be grilled. Mushrooms tend to be fried. I personally don't like tomatoes. I don't eat raw tomatoes. I also don't like grilled tomatoes. I only like them when they're cooked in a sauce like a ragu or something like that. So on my fry up, when they have tomatoes on there, I always ask to replace them with another item. Some places can get a little bit particular about what you replace them with, because for example, a sausage is normally a little bit more expensive than an egg or something like that. They have different tiers depending on how expensive the ingredient is. But normally I would swap that for something else. And then at the side, we usually have some carbs involved. So you can have toast, white or brown toast, depending on what you prefer, and hash browns. A hash brown is chopped up potato, which is then put into kind of a flat disc shape often, and then deep fried. So it's like crispy fried potato, but all as one big chunk. Some places also do like sauteed potatoes, like the French style, um, but I would say hash browns tend to be most common. And then there's another ingredient which tends to be very typically British, which is baked beans. Baked beans are a white bean, I think it's a cannelloni bean, I'm not sure exactly which bean it is to be perfectly honest, and it's in a sweet tomato sauce. As well as that, for example this morning, that was the selection that I had, and I only got three pieces of toast because my son actually grabbed one off my plate before it even touched the table, which I wasn't best pleased about, but he was eating bread, so you know, I can't really complain. The 
Additional item I got was black pudding, which is a little bit difficult to describe, but it's basically a blood sausage. It's black and you normally fry it, but you can eat it raw. I personally don't like it raw, but you know, um, horses for courses and all that. The ingredients that I've told you about there are the typical ingredients. There are some places which will offer variations on this. Maybe they have like avocado, stuff like that. But if you go to a normal British pub and you have a fry up or you go to a little calf or something like that, that's what you will be having. Unless you go to somewhere where they have like a regional speciality and then that's something that they would often add on the side, maybe instead of bread. So for example, where I am, we have something called an oat cake, which again, picture somewhere, which is like a savoury pancake or a savoury crepe, if you know what that is. And it's usually quite thick, it's made with wheat flour, and often it's covered in cheese and grilled, so it's got melted cheese and it's a little bit crispy. It's really nice, I actually really enjoy it, but I wouldn't usually have it with a fry up because it's heavy on heavy on heavy, and I love heavy food, but sometimes it can get a little bit too much. But at home, I will often have oat cakes with cheese and then maybe bacon, and that is the meal. So I maybe have two oat cakes, cheese, and then bacon on top. But you know, depends how I'm feeling. Before we move on, actually, I just remembered the English breakfast obviously is in England. In Wales, Scotland, and Ireland, they also have their own version. I think probably because they don't like it being called English, because most of those places they um, aren't the biggest fans of of the English in general or historically, should I say. Um, so they have a Scottish breakfast, a Welsh breakfast, an Irish breakfast, which sometimes have slightly different ingredients. For example, the Welsh breakfast sometimes has some lamb on it because Wales is famous for producing sheep and lambs, but it's all basically the same kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that's what we normally have. Most people won't have a fry up every single day because actually it's quite unhealthy, it's very, very heavy and very fatty. So we don't really eat it every day. It's more like a treat. And often in my house, we actually have it as a lunch or a dinner because it's such a big, heavy meal. It would be better to replace, for example, instead of having pasta, I would have a fry up, but a lot of people do have it on a regular basis. In a normal house, I would say the most common breakfast is cereal of some kind. Weetabix or wheat biscuits, if you buy the supermarket own brand or you buy the saver version, that would probably be one of the most common, but we have cornflakes and other different types of cereal, which you normally have with milk. There are some people who do different things, but Let's keep it standard for now. Alongside cereal, we also often have toast with a selection of different spreads. And a spread in English is basically something that you spread on something, very literally. So Nutella, which is the famous one, we would call a hazelnut spread because it's made from hazelnuts and you spread it on bread or toast or whatever you're eating. We also have jam and marmalade. And this is always something really interesting that I like to tell my students when I talk about jam and marmalade, because marmalade is often a word that is found in lots of other languages, especially the Latin based languages. For us, the difference would be marmalade is for citrus fruit. So lemon, lime, orange, etc. And jam is for everything else. So if you have berries, strawberry, cherry, blueberry, anything like that, any of those types of fruit, then it would be called a jam. Also, you need to be careful that jam in the UK is called jelly in America. And I think in Australia, it's sometimes called jelly, sometimes called jam, depends on where you live and who you're speaking to. So you want to be a little bit careful. It's a bit like chips in the UK and French fries in America. If you order chips in America, you'll be very disappointed, which unfortunately I had when I was there. Talking about toast, there are a couple of other common breakfast dishes, especially ones that I really enjoy, which involve toast and eggs. The first one is scrambled eggs. So I mentioned earlier that scrambled is one of the ways that you can have your eggs cooked. And scrambled eggs is very literally normally two pieces of toast with scrambled eggs that are put on top and then sometimes a sauce like ketchup or something if you like that kind of thing. I often like it with just black pepper, but you know, everyone has their own preference. But one of my favourite childhood breakfast dishes, and something that I don't very often eat now, but I always like to have it occasionally for a little hit of nostalgia, is what we call eggs and soldiers. 
And very literally, that is just a boiled egg with toast cut into thin slices. I don't know why they're called soldiers. Often you can buy special trays where it stands the toast up, so it literally looks like soldiers standing around the egg. But normally you just have an egg in an egg holder or an egg stand, and then you have your toast on the side. Usually with butter, but again, some people don't like butter, so maybe they don't have it. And when you have a boiled egg, there are a couple of different ways that people use to open them. Because when you have a solid egg, I guess you need to find a way of taking the top off so you can actually get inside and you can take your toast and you can dip it in and get all of that beautiful yolk. And maybe if there's a little bit of the white that isn't completely solid, which is the way I quite like mine. Talking about the egg, the yolk is the orange or the yellow part in the middle, the white is the white part, obviously. There are technical scientific names, but if you talk to someone and you say, oh, I need to use two egg yolks, that's what people will actually understand you mean. So there's a couple of different ways I've seen people doing it. First of all, you can get a, a spoon and maybe you tap the top, which weakens the top of the shell, and then they would use the spoon to scoop the top off. Other people will get a knife and they will tap the side until they make a small thing and then they will just try and slice all the way through. My personal preference is I actually use the knife but I go with the tip and I push it and I make a, a small indent to break the surface and I push it straight through and then I would cut out of one side and then out of the other side and it tends to create a nice flat top and then I also have the the cap of the egg if you like which I can scoop out and I can eat that separately but again as as a kid there were always different ways that you try and get into it and get all of that stuff without getting the yolk and all of the egg everywhere the final breakfast item I wanted to talk about which I think is very common in England is a crumpet or crumpets I actually have no idea how they're prepared and when they were once prepared on the Great British Bake Off basically everyone there had no idea because you just buy them in the supermarket. They are baked in some way, I believe there's a batter, a batter being usually flour and a liquid that you mix together and it's like a thick liquid that you then use to cook to prepare something which is what you put on fish to make fish and chips. You cover it in batter and then you fry it also, if you make a pancake, that would be a batter and then you prepare it that way. So batter is a term we use quite a lot for cooking those type of things. But I believe you have a batter and then you have to cook it in a special type of pan with some sort of crumpet iron or something which makes them flat. But basically they are uh, a round shape and they have a thickness to them and they are very spongy and normally you put loads of butter on top so they're very moist and they have loads of butter inside but it's not something I often eat personally but I know that a lot of people have them you toast them put butter maybe you also put some jam or something like that on top and there's something very easy to eat because the bottom is normally a little bit crispy so you can just pick it up and then eat it on the go. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today because if I keep talking about all of this food I'm going to get starving hungry again and have to go and have more breakfast and it's not really the right time of day for that kind of thing. I hope you found it interesting hearing about these recipes and some of these British cultural things that you'll find if you go and visit a pub or you come here and see what we like to eat. If there are any other recipes or topics or ideas for these podcasts that you want me to cover, put a comment below the video. Let me know what you think of these recipes and I can't wait to hear from you. Have a fantastic week. Have a great day learning English and I will speak to you very soon. <laughs>